All right, so I got I got a message uh, on Reddit from somebody, and uh, I usually don't like to read private messages out loud, but the ones that don't have any um, private information, you know, I think it's easy, it, it's it's more productive if we share it with the uh, three other people who are listening in, right? So, anyways, um, I recently left a reply. Okay, blah blah blah. Uh, firstly, what is your position on monogamy and polygamy? I assume you're pro polygamy. But I was particularly interested in what you think of traditional monogamy. Well, um, that's a good question. Uh, Guerrero is just about masculine likes masculine. Um, so any position I would have on that would be kind of outside of it. I'm not a big fan of the government doing anything. So from the legal aspect of it, uh, I don't think it should be illegal. As long as it's consensual and it's not like you know slavery or something like that, it, I don't have a problem with it. Now, just because a relationship is consensual, it doesn't mean that it's functional. Uh, but that could just as easily apply to monogamy. You could have you have plenty of functional uh, relationships that are uh, that are um, that don't have multiple partners in them. Now, whether polygamy is inherently more defective, that certainly seems to be what culture wants to say, at least in this culture. Um, and, in, and, of course, in the cultures that you do have polygamy, like Islam, um, there tends to be less of a focus on, on, on women's rights. Uh, but, the, but the idea that you would have polygamy, I, I have no idea. I mean, again, I, I, I really don't know. Traditional monogamy, well, it, it's cultural, so obviously there's that to it. Um, yeah, I, I, I just, uh, the, the b basic point I have with these discussions on polygamy and monogamy, you know, some of us, I, I don't want to say who, but some of us would like to have just one person, you know, just just one. And uh, to, to talk about, oh, well, can we have multiple partners? I'm like, where, where are people getting this from? Our, you know, can, can somebody share or something? Uh, anyways, uh, so I, I can't say much more on polygamy, and I'm afraid I'm going to ramble even more. So I'll go on to the next one. I was also wondering what you think uh, falls under the category of masculine. I think if someone is willing to deconstruct sexuality to, to the point of removing society's goalposts, hetero homo, surely something just as traditional, masculinity, would receive the same treatment. I don't really have an opinion on what masculine and feminine is or should be, but my instinct tells me it's largely a physical attribute backed up by intellect and sometimes being a gentleman or what I call not being a colossal cunt. Well, see, the thing with being a colossal cunt is it's not just females who can be rude. So, uh, yeah, so, look, I'm not a big fan of traditional masculinity. I've spoken out against it in Chapter 12 where I review the book Androphilia. And this uh, tough guy masculinity of, oh, well, you know, we don't have any emotions and we don't have any feelings. I, I think the only people that serves is abusers. Because if you, if, you, uh, if you punch another guy in the face and then you're like, well, you're a pussy if you cry, the only person that helps is the abuser. Because if the victim says, wait a second, this is not good, then you could just always say, wow, you're being a pussy. Okay. So a lot of masculinity is about keeping men in line and making sure they don't speak out against abuse. So, for example, uh, that, this also helps women. Uh, so the idea in this culture that a man uh, could be assaulted by women. A half of, uh, of domestic abuse cases are women against men. And yet that's never how it's portrayed on any show uh, or anywhere, you know. Uh, and, and that's that kind of traditional masculinity that men are never going to be abused, especially by women. Uh, that keeps men down, I think. So that's in Chapter 12, if you want to take a look at that. Um, now, you, you make the point that if I'm going to go and attack sexuality and say, well, most men are essentially bisexual, the hetero-homo thing doesn't make any sense, then shouldn't we apply that to, um, to all, of, uh, all of gender? Uh, well, it depends on where the evidence is. I mean, first, I'm very skeptical of... People who say, oh, there's no such thing as gender, it's all socially constructed, because the difference between men and women biologically is an actual chromosome. So females have XX and males have XY. Now, just on the theoretical level, I mean, what are the odds that an entire chromosome is not going to affect anything but a couple physical, your genitalia and a couple secondary sexual characteristics? I mean, what are the odds?
If you look at chimpanzees, I think uh, they have an extra pair of chromosomes. If you look at something like Down syndrome, I think chromosome 21 has a couple of places where it's duplicated or replicated or something. So the idea that we have an entire chromosome, of chromosome worth of difference, and that's just going to have a couple superficial characteristics. I mean, just, just off the bat, I have to be very skeptical about that. Now, in practice, uh, there is a book that looks into studies on innate gender. Uh, it's called The Essential Difference, Male and Female Brains, and the Truth About Autism. It's written by Simon Baron Cohen, who's Borat's real-life cousin, by the way. Um, and, and he makes the case that males are more systemizing and females are more empathizing, and that's by nature. Uh, there's been a rash of criticisms of this, of course. Uh, Simon uh, Baron Cohen himself says he's kind of just a, a milquetoast liberal who is, uh, you know, he's not uh, misogynistic. He's just, he just goes where the evidence is. Uh, now, again, there's been a rash of criticism, um, mostly coming from, from feminist uh, types. And the problem is they haven't done too much of the research. And they criticize the research itself. And, you know, I, I kind of feel somewhat sympathy towards them because if their whole premise is culture creates these things, it's somewhat of an unfalsifiable claim. Same thing with Guerrero. If I'm saying that culture creates, uh, creates the lack of sexual interest uh, in most men towards other men, it's kind of hard to say, well, let's do an experiment because every th culture is going to taint every kind of experiment and it's going to be very difficult. There are still mosquitoes out. Um, it, it's going to taint uh, everything. So it, it is kind of difficult to do a study because culture is always there. Uh, nonetheless, um, the, problem, the problem I have with feminism is they say, well, masculinity is flawed and there's really no... Now, what they really mean by that is there is a gender. It's the female gender. And anyone who is not that way is defective. And I, I, I just don't see that as a very good compromise. You know, because men and women, I think, are different. Um, and, I, and I guess I can't say anything more than, you know, I just feel a tremendously different from women. Now, there is one good piece of evidence that I think is, is outside of culture that shows us that there is gender. You have gays who, as I write about in Chapter 3, are t uh, tend towards the feminine side of things, and especially transgendered people who tend towards the complete opposite of what they're told to be. So if culture is indoctrinating everybody to be your with a penis and you need to be masculine and you have a vagina, you better be feminine. What about women or biological females who have a vagina? They don't have any chromosomal hormonal issues, but then they realize, wait a second, I, I feel more comfortable being a man. They get testosterone. Uh, they get uh, gender re reconstructive surgery, all that, or sex reconstructive surgery, and they feel a lot happier as men. I mean, why? how is that possible if not uh, for something called innate gender? That at least there's some, I mean, culture is going to shift a lot of it, but there has to be something there for transgendered people to latch onto and say, people tell me to be feminine, culture, family, everybody. But I actually want to be completely the opposite of that. Um, you know, and, and I've never really received a good response for that. I mean, I guess you could say gays. You could just deny that gays are not feminine. You could say transgendered people. You can't really deny that there's transgendered people. What you can say is that they're mentally ill, but they actually show a lot better progress when they do become the gender. They, they become... Let's say you have a female, wants to be a male, testosterone, all that stuff. They are much happier being male. So it's hard to say that they're mentally ill because they do show improvement. Okay. So anyways, uh, you go on to say, if society were to remove the two polar opposites, homo-hetero, uh, what would you replace them with? It could be my shocking memory, but you did not really seem to put your foot down on this. You only describe what you think it's not. Well, actually, your memory is good. I did not say what, what we would replace homo and hetero with um, because I, I ultimately don't know. I think there would be a lot more uh, sexual flexibility in culture. You see this even now a little bit with women. 
Uh, I, I think the category of gay, you have feminine men who are attracted uh, pretty much to, to, to other men, uh, probably more or less masculine, although I made a video on why, again, are, are feminine gay men attracted to other feminine gay men, so that's confusing. Um, um, let's see here. Uh, yeah, there's going to be masculine men attracted to masculine men. That's Guerrero. But as as another video that I'm putting up, uh, there's masculine men attracted to feminine men. Okay, that's that that certainly is that was a category in the ancient world as well. So um, I don't know what kind of categories we would have. I, I think there's going to be a lot more sexual fluidity. And 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 the whole point is that sexuality today, the homo hetero scale, including bisexuality in the middle. This is just a result of focusing on procreation. So in chapter 10, you read about how when the Christians took over the Roman Empire, um, they basically made the distinction between procreative sex and non-procreative sex. Well, all same-sex sex is non-procreative, and a lot of opposite-sex sex is procreative. So by the time the 1800s come around and we come up with the specific labels, procreative gets rolled into heterosexual, uh, there's lots of mosquitoes still, uh, and non-procreative gets rolled into opposites or uh, into uh, homosexuality. And of course, with homosexuality uh, being branded now as this effeminate subtype, you lose all the variety of same-sex uh, different pairings that you had in the old days as well. So my point is is really just to show that these categories we have today, the homosexual, heterosexual uh, dichotomy, including bisexuality in the middle, is just the wrong way of looking at it because this is just cultural baggage we absorb from religion. On a side note, that would explain why every high school in Western civilization is plagued by drawings of penises done by young boys. My high school t science teacher always pointed this just how stupid it was, but never really put forward a theory, though that's no surprise. On another side note, uh, it explains the rise of the bromance bordering on the homosexual. In an episode of Scrubs, the bromance between JD and Turk when they low five by bumping crotches in public. They also sing songs about their guy love. Uh, well, there's another show, uh, Friends. I, I've never really watched it, but one of the few Friends uh, episodes I saw was when, I don't know which, which of the characters, but two of the guys ended up falling asleep on, like right next to each other or like hugging each other. And then they woke up and said, like, this is the best sleep we've ever had. So they kept doing that, but they tried to do it so nobody would find out. Uh, but, yeah, bromance is just, uh, is just a, a way that we use to, to corral people into, um, into, the or into the heterosexualization. So we say, oh, well, see, this is not sexual. It can't be sexual at all. Well... And, and we continue to have that wall between friends, friendship of males and sex between males. Uh, now, as far as your science uh, teacher saying that uh, kids draw penises in the book or students do, yeah, I mean, that, that, that happened all the time at my high school. I went to an all-guys high school, so maybe it was even worse there. But uh, I remember we had a science teacher, and, and he was kind of old. He was a priest. So what we would do is we would tell him to spell out words on the blackboard. And then uh, this guy named Danny, he would, uh, he would draw these penises in his notebook. And he was a pretty good artist, so they had, like, veins and everything. And then so the priest is at the board writing some deoxyribose nucleic acid. <laughs> and then Danny would open his notebook, just put it over his head, and everybody behind him would see it. And, uh, yeah, it was pretty funny. Everyone started laughing, and then the teacher uh, looked around, and, and then he slammed his book down and, and, uh, you know, he wasn't wiser. Now, one time he did catch him, and uh, he flipped through the notebook, but apparently he didn't find it. I don't know how, but because his notebook was half filled with penises or something. But anyways, that, that's a pretty obvious occurrence. Um, so anyways, I hope I didn't ramble too much. Uh, I, I'm, I'm more of a writer than a, than a video person, but with YouTube and everything, it's, it's easier for me. Well, it's probably more productive for me to do videos. And, uh, you know, so if I didn't answer any of your questions, just feel free to ask again, and maybe I'll write it. Uh, so anyways, that's that, and, uh, you know, see you later.